Karunang karuna tarangi takshi Drita pa shankusha kushpa bana chapam Anima di bira vritam mayu kahai Raham mityeva vibhavaye Bhavani Champaka shoka punnaga Saugandhi kala satkacha Kuru vinda manishreni Kanat koti ramandita Ashtami chandra vibraja dhalikastala shobhita Mukha chandra kalankabha mriganabhi visheshaka Varanasmara mangalya grihatorana chillika Vatra lakshmi parivaha chalanmena bhalochana Namaste, and welcome to the next episode of Sri Lalita Sahasranam, the thousand names of the goddess. So we're continuing on here. These names represent her form. To paraphrase a meme, she doesn't always manifest a form, but when she does, it looks like this. <laughs> and the thousand names go on to discuss that form from the head to the feet, because that is the order of the goddess. When describing a male god, it's from the feet to the head. So this is only one of the differences between the male and female forms. Number 13. Champaka shoka punnaga saughandika lasatkacha. Champaka, ashoka, punnaga, and saughandika are four types of fragrant flowers that adorn her hair. But her hair does not get fragrance because of the flowers. The flowers get their fragrance from her hair. <laughs> her hair is always sweet and aromatic. Now here's a quote from Saundarya Lahari. Your dense, well-oiled and soft braids of hair, resembling a group of blue lotuses in bloom, dispel our ignorance. I think the flowers of the trees in the garden of the foe of Vala abide therein to attain their innate fragrance. In other words, <laughs> the, the foe of Vala Vala was a demon that she killed. So the foe of Vala is Lalita. And the flowers that grow in her garden are there just to attain their fragrance. In other words, she is the cause of all the fragrance in the world. She's the origin. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, I am the original flavor of the earth. And we'll see later on in this Sahasranam that she is actually the form of Krishna and all Vishnu and all the gods. <laughs> so she is the origin of everything from the top to the bottom. <laughs> and she is in control of everything. So going on, wetness indicates her compassion and softness indicates her motherhood. So the, the wetness, the, the well-oiled braids of hair indicate her compassion. They, they uh, have a blue color. Huh? It's so black. Her hair is so black. It's blue. It has blue highlights. If you've ever seen people in South India, they have hair like this. And the softness of her hair indicates her motherhood, her compassion and her care for all the living entities that she creates. 
Durvasa Muni, in his Shakti Mahimna, meditates on her sweet-smelling hair in his heart chakra. The idea behind these descriptions is, since knowledge is considered supreme for realizing Brahman, if even her hair can give this kind of knowledge, uh, such that Durvasa Muni, who's considered a form of Shiva, can get transcendental knowledge simply by meditating on her hair, <laughs> then what about the rest of her? Huh? So anyway, we start from the top down. We start from meditating on her hair, her crown, her earrings, and like that and gradually her face and so on. So next is 14. Kuruvinda Manishreni Kanat Kotira Mandita. Kuruvinda is a rare type of ruby that is said to enhance love, wealth, and devotion for Vishnu. Vishnu is her brother. So these rubies adorn her crown. When she is meditated upon with this red crown, spirituality and prosperity increase. Sometimes people complain to me that, well, I'd like to study this uh, spiritual knowledge, but I have to work for a living. Well, <laughs> why don't you meditate on the rubies in her crown? Why don't you chant her names and see what happens? Get initiated into the Siddhi Mantra and the Mahashodashi Mantra. We have a whole series on that. I'll post a link here. And then you can get these benefits too. Saundarya Lahari 42 says, Why will not he who extols your golden crown, closely studied with the twelve sons, Dvarasha Aditya, the twelve Adityas are the twelve suns. As the sun goes around the zodiac, it goes through twelve constellations. So there's twelve Adityas, which represent the sun in each of the twelve signs of the zodiac. The Vedic zodiac, not the Western zodiac. <laughs> so why will not he who extols your golden crown, studded with the twelve suns, transformed into gems, form the idea that the digit of the crescent moon, variegated by the enveloping luster of the inlaid gems, is but the bow of Indra, the rainbow. In other words, she has this crown, huh? and the crown has these 12 ruby gems on it. And they're so dazzling and bright that she also has the crescent moon on her head, isn't it? And that, that moon will reflect the dazzling glory of these gems and start to look like a rainbow instead of the moon. This is psychedelic, man. <laughs> Next is 15. Ashtami Chandra Vibraja Dhalika Stala Shobita. Her forehead appears like the moon on the eighth day. The eighth day from the full moon or new moon is called Ashtami. The moon appears beautiful exactly half full on the eighth day. So her different parts of her body are compared to the moon on different days. She has the crescent moon in her hair, but her forehead appears like a semicircle, a half moon, huh? because it glows so brightly. And that glow is also cooling. It's not a harsh glow, like the glow of the sun, but it's moonshine. <laughs> it's very beautiful comparison. 16 is Mukachandra Kalankaba Mriganabi Visheshaka. She is wearing a tilak mark on her forehead made with colored earths sandalwood and unguents like musk, uh, either as an ornament, this is worn in India as an ornament, or as a sectarian distinction, like the Vaishnavas wear the Urdhra Pundra, the vertical tilak, and the Shaivites wear the Bhasma. Now this is usually made of, of Kasturika. 
Kasturika is a fragrant paste. For example, wearing these basma, the uh, ashes are perfumed with the extract of, of an herbal preparation made from a tree. So her face is, med, uh, is compared to a spot on the moon. Uh, the spots on the moon make it very beautiful. And the tilak mark is like a spot on the, on the spotless moon of her face. Okay, 17 is Varanasmara Mangalya Grihatora Nachillika. Her face is compared to the palace of Lord Manmata, Cupid, the god of love. Huh? Cupid, Manmata, made a palace, a beautiful palace, inspired by her face. <laughs> The design of it represents or, or mirrors the design of her face because he's so in love with her. And her eyebrows are compared to the festoons decorating this house. In other words, it has flags, festoons, banners, you know, silken colored cloths waving in the breeze. Huh? The house isn't just a block of concrete like today's houses. It's beautiful. It's a work of art. I mean, Cupid, of course, is going to make something very attractive. And so by basing it on her face, he has made the festoons like her eyebrows, which are always moving with different expressions. <laughs> and finally, 18. Vatra Lakshmi Parivaha Chalanmi Nabalochana. Her eyes appear like fishes moving in a pond. Her face is compared to a pond and her eyes to fishes. Fishes move very quickly. Huh? If you have ever been free diving in the ocean when there's lots of fishes, they, they can turn on a dime, just even a whole school of them. They turn together. It's amazing how they move. Huh? So our eyes are like that. They're always darting here and there and looking all around because she wants to bless her worshipers. She wants to benedict her devotees by her glance. See, she's got this power, like Ramana Maharshi. Ramana Maharshi had this amazing power that he could benedict someone. He could even lift them to self-realization simply by his glance. Confirmed. <laughs> so, of course, if even an earthly sage like Ramana has this power, Imagine the goddess, the source of all this knowledge and power, Shakti. Uh -huh. She has got all powers. So certainly she has the power to benedict, to give enlightenment or even liberation simply by her glance or simply with her feet. In another name, it's described that many gods and goddesses have uh, different hand gestures mudras, huh? like abhaya mudra, do not fear. And uh, the dana mudra, giving. Huh? And so they give blessings and they, they remove the fear of their devotees with these gestures. But she doesn't use these gestures. She doesn't need them because just her feet are enough to give the highest benediction. Om Tatsat. Oh, shut the hell. <laughs>